structure and functions of nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is a double membrane sheath that defines the outer limits of the nucleus. It is a special perinuclear cisterna of the cell endomembrane system with an inner and outer membrane. The nuclear envelope is enmeshed in a network of filaments for stability. The nuclear envelope is a double lipid bilayer that encloses the genetic material in eukaryotic cells. It is also known as the perinuclear envelope, nuclear membrane, nucleolemma or karyotheca. The two membranes are roughly parallel, separated by a perinuclear space. Each membrane is with a typical unit membrane structure, encloses a flattened sac and is connected at the nuclear pore sites. The outer one is called as ectokaryotheca and the inner one as endokaryotheca. Each membrane is about 75 to 90 angstrom thick. The outer membrane is a dynamic structure fusing at points with the endoplasmic reticulum. The outer membrane resembles rough endoplasmic reticulum in regions where ribosomes are attached to it. In other regions, the outer membrane has the appearance of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The outer membrane is comparatively thicker than the inner membrane. The two membranes enclose an intervening space of about 100 to 700 angstrom, a filled, filled compartment called the perinuclear space or cisterna. It is probably filled with fluid similar to that contained in the endoplasmic reticulum. Antibodies have been localized in the perinuclear space in the lymphoid cells, indicating that they are produced and stored at the site. Lipid droplets and crystalline droplets have also been observed in the perinuclear space. Threads-like structures have been seen extending from membrane to membrane in the perinuclear space, which helps to keep the two membranes apart. The inner surface of the envelope is attached to a layer of fibrous proteins, 50 to 80 nanometer thick, that is known as the nuclear lamina. What is nuclear lamina? The inner nuclear membrane is connected to the nuclear lamina, a network of intermediate filament proteins, which is 10 to 80 nanometer thick. It lines the inside surface of the inner nuclear membrane, except in areas of nuclear pores, and consists of a square lattice of intermediate filaments. These intermediate filaments are of three types in mammals. Lamines A having molecular weight 74 kD, Lamines B having molecular weight 72 kD, and Lamines C having molecular weight 62 kD. The lamines form dimers that have a rod-like domain and two globular heads at one end. Under appropriate conditions of pH and ionic strength, the dimers spontaneously associate in to filaments that have a diameter and repeating structure similar to those of cytoplasmic filaments. The nuclear lamina is a very dynamic structure. In mammals, cells undergoing mitosis, the transient phosphorylation of several serine residues on the laminas causes the lamina to reversibly disassemble into tetramers of phosphorylated lamin A and lamin C and membrane associated lamin B. As a result, lamin A and lamin C becomes entirely soluble during mitosis. At telophase, they become dephosphorylated again and polymerize around chromatin. 
lamin B seems to remain associated with membrane vesicles during mitosis and these vesicles in turn remain as a distinct subset of membrane components from which nuclear envelope is resembled at telophase. Inside an interphase nucleus chromatin binds strongly to the inner part of the nuclear lamina which is believed to interfere with chromosome condensation. In fact, during meiotic chromosome condensation, the nuclear lamina completely disappear by the tachetin stage of prophase and reappears later during diplotin in oocytes, but does not appear at all in spermatocytes. The laminas may play a crucial role in the assembly of interphase nuclei. The lamina acts as a site for attachment of chromosomes and provides structural stability to the nucleus. Defects in the genes encoding for nuclear lamina have been associated with various genetic disorders termed laminopathies such as Dreyfus muscular dystrophy, which is a muscular wasting disease, progeria, which is premature aging and restrictive dermopathy, which is a disease associated with extremely tight skin and other severe neonatal abnormalities. Another important structure associated with nuclear envelope is called nuclear pore. What are nuclear pores and where are they present? The nuclear membrane possesses a number of nuclear pores at the points where the inner and outer nuclear membranes are fused together. Moment into and out of the nucleus occurs through these pores. However, the nuclear pores are not empty. Nuclear transport is controlled by nuclear pore complexes consisting of about a thousand nucleoproteins. Each pore complex is large enough to accommodate the passage of ribosomal subunits, large protein RNA complexes, which exit the nucleus after being assembled in the nucleolus. The nuclear pore was first observed by Callan and Tomlin in 1950 in amphibian oocytes. It occurs in all eukaryotic cells of both plants and animals. The pore is outlined by a circular fusion of inner and outer nuclear membranes, but it exists in association with the non-membrane structures that together form the pore complex. The nuclear pores are octagonal in shape with a diameter varying from 400 to thousand angstrom. The pores are separated from each other by a space of 1500 angstrom. The number of pores per unit area of the nuclear envelope varies with cell type and with the physiological state of the cell. The total pore number per nucleus varies greatly ranging from 40 to 145 per micrometer square in nuclei of various plants and animals. Watson, 1959, stated the number of pores in mammalian cells as 10% of the total surface of the nucleus. In amphibian oocytes, certain plant cells and protozoa, the surface occupied by the pores may be as high as 20 to 36%. There appears to be a general relationship between pore density and the degree to which a nuclear envelope is transporting RNA from the nucleus. The density is low in slowly metabolizing cells and in other cells during relatively inactive phases of their cell cycles. In the nucleated red blood cells and lymphocytes, which are highly differentiated but metabolically inactive and non-proliferating cells, pore densities as low as approximately 3 pores per micrometer square are found. 
the majority of the proliferating cells have pore density between 7 and 12 pores per micrometer square. Highly active but differentiated cells like liver, kidney, brain cells have pore densities between 15 and 20 pores per micrometer square. In the specialized cells like cervical gland and oocytes from Xenopus levis. Higher pore density of approximately 40 pores per micrometer square and approximately 50 pores per micrometer square respectively are found. The number of pores in the nuclear envelope or pore density seems to correlate with the transcriptional activity of the cell. The distribution of pores over the surface of the nuclear envelope is generally not random in somatic cell types. Pore arrangements in other cell types range from rows, clusters to hexagonal packing orders. In any event, whether the pore are random or non-random, they are probably not free to move laterally in the plane of the nuclear envelope because of the surface interactions of the envelope with fibrils on both inner and outer sides. The nuclear pores are enclosed by circular annuli. At the annulus, the inner and outer membranes of the nuclear envelope fuse. The pores and annuli collectively form the pore complex. The annulus is an electron dense material that rims the pores and projects from both the nucleoplasmic and cytoplasmic surfaces of the nuclear envelope as a diffuse around particulate cylinder. The annulus appears as a ring of subunits. In new oocytes, eight subunits are clearly seen to rim the pore, each with a diameter of about 17 nanometer cube. In addition to subunits, the annulus has a matrix that varies in consistency from amorphous to fibrillar. This material is digested by trypsin and remains unaffected when exposed to ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease. It means that annular material is protein in nature. It has been suggested that the annulus may serve as a spinster, alternatively decreasing and increasing the size of the pore with varying conditions. Annulus is supposed to be a hollow cylinder fitting into the nuclear pore. The lumen of the cylinder is 500 angstrom in diameter, representing the nuclear pore. The wall of the cylinder consists of eight evenly placed microtubules or microcylinders. Each microtubule is about 200 angstrom in diameter. It has been found that a central microtubule of 150 to 180 angstrom diameter is present within the lumen of annulus and is attached to its inner wall by fibrous stratus. It is thought that annulus is a closely self-assembly structure that interacts with the nuclear membrane during the final stage of its formation. How this nuclear envelope is formed? The nuclear envelope is the nuclear boundary of the interphase and prophase nuclei. It breaks down at the end of prophase and is reformed at the end of the nuclear division. Thus, it dissembles at the onset of mitosis and reassembled at the end of mitosis. The mechanism of assembly involves the attachment of vesicles to the chromatin followed by the fusion of vesicles to form a double membrane system. The binding of vesicles to the chromatin requires both chromatin and membrane bound proteins but does not require ATP. On the other hand, the fusion of membrane bound vesicles to form 
the nuclear membrane does require ATP and GTP hydrolysis. That is also required in membrane fusion events during exocytosis and endocytosis. The vesicle is used for assembly of nuclear envelope form a subset of endoplasmic reticulum derived vesicles and are distinct from the majority of other endoplasmic reticulum derived vesicles. Lamin depolymerization and polymerization during disassembly and reassembly of the nuclear envelope also involves reversible phosphorylation. What is the chemical composition of nuclear envelope? Nuclear envelope is composed of proteins, lipids, enzymes, RNA, DNA and carbohydrates. The predominant constituent of the envelope is protein, making up 65 to 75 percent of the material. About 20 different proteins have been distinguished from nuclear envelope by gel electrophoresis. They range in molecular weight from 16 to 160 kD. Many of the proteins appear to be the same as those of microsomes, but there are some proteins which are unique to the nuclear envelope. The lipids making up 17 to 35 percent of the nuclear envelope and are present in relative concentration is quite similar to that seen in the endoplasmic reticulum. However, some differences have been observed indicating that the nuclear envelope is more than one mere continuation of the endoplasmic reticulum around the chromosomes. The nuclear envelope contains lower concentrations of unsaturated fatty acids in lecithin and phosphatidylethanol amine, but higher levels of cholesterol and triglycerides as compared to microsomes. These compositional characteristics suggest that the nuclear envelope may be more stable than the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum. The nuclear envelope contains a variety of enzyme activities that bear similarities to those observed in the endoplasmic reticulum. Glucose 6-phosphatase, an enzyme characteristic of the endoplasmic reticulum, is often found in preparations of nuclear envelope. The enzyme has been associated with both the inner and the outer membranes. The envelope also possesses a number of enzymes with electron transport activities similar to those of microsomes. For example, NADH cytochrome C reductase, NADH cytochrome B5 reductase and NADPH cytochrome C reductase, cytochrome P450 which is characteristic of endoplasmic reticulum and acts as an electron acceptor from NADPH cytochrome C reductase is also present in nuclear envelope membranes, but in lower concentrations as compared to endoplasmic reticulum. The presence of DNA and RNA is probably due to contamination of nuclear membrane by closely associated chromatin material. Origin of nuclear envelope. There are a number of evidences which support the view that nuclear envelope is actually specialized cytoplasmic structure originating from the endoplasmic membrane system. It has been reported that nuclear membrane breaks into a number of fragments which merge with endoplasmic reticulum elements during the later stage of prophase of mitosis and meiosis. It is reformed during telophase from the cisterni of endoplasmic reticulum. Both the nuclear envelope and endoplasmic reticulum are lipoproteinaceous and trilaminar. Outer surface of ectokaryotheca of nuclear envelope is studied with the ribosomes like rough endoplasmic reticulum and is continuous with rough endoplasmic reticulum at certain points. What are the functions of nuclear envelope? Number one, nucleocytoplasmic transport. Nuclear envelope regulates the exchange of materials between the nucleoplasm and cytoplasm. The permeability of the nuclear envelope is not fixed but varies in different cell types. 
and also within same cell type during different stages of cell cycle. It is so because the nuclear envelope is not a static but a dynamic barrier. The exchange of materials occurs in different ways. Number one, through nuclear pores. Most of the macromolecules pass through the nuclear pore of the nuclear envelope. The ribonucleoprotein particles synthesized in the nucleus pass through the nuclear pores in filamentous form. The largest particles passing through the nuclear pores were found to be about 125 to 145 angstrom in diameter that is much smaller than the nuclear pore size. The size of the macromolecules has a bearing on their ability to pass through the nuclear pores. Histones, molecular weight 15 kd, enter the nuclei rapidly. Bovine serum molecules, molecular weight 62 kd, enter more slowly and ferritin, molecular weight 450 kd, does not enter at all. Number two, through nuclear membranes. Inorganic ions and small organic biomolecules like amino acids, monosugars, sucrose, glycerol, small polypeptides and nucleotides pass through the nuclear membranes by free diffusion. It is also possible that they may go across the membrane by active transport. The nuclear membrane is highly permeable to low molecular weight non-electrolytes, especially sucrose and glycerol. The transport across the nuclear membranes is controlled by enzymes and requires energy. It is also sodium dependent. Number three, by blabbing. The nuclear membrane forms out pockets which are pinched off to form blebs or vesicles. These vesicles have been found to have DNA and ribosome like material. These vesicles may form annulated lamellae which are precursors of endoplasmic reticulum cisterni or acts as initials of cell organelles like mitochondria or plastids through the endoplasmic reticulum. The perinuclear space of the nuclear envelope is continuous with the cavity of the cisterni of the endoplasmic reticulum. It has been reported that in blastocystic cells of rabbit, ribosomes like granules enter the perinuclear space through inner membrane and are then distributed to the cisterni of the endoplasmic reticulum. Number two, attachment of nuclear components. The chromosomes may show both centromeric and telomeric attachment to the nuclear envelope. The joint chromosomes of dipteran salivary glands terminate at both ends on the nuclear envelope. The attachment of chromosomes may assist condensation and separation during cell division. The bar body is also firmly attached to the nuclear membrane. The lateral components of the synaptonemal complex which is formed during meiosis are attached to the inner nuclear membrane. The interface chromatin has been demonstrated to be firmly attached to the inner nuclear membrane in mammalian cells. Persistence of DNA in isolated nuclear envelope components indicates that chromatin is associated with the nuclear envelope. Number three, defense. The nuclear envelope separates the genetic material of the cell from the cytoplasm and so protects the DNA from the mutagenic effects of cytoplasmic enzymes. Number four, protein synthesis. Ribosomes associated with the outer surface of ectokaryotheca are involved in the synthesis of antibodies, lysosomal enzymes, peroxidases, and choline esterase, for example, in the nuclear envelope of nerve cells. Number five, microtubule organizing center. Nuclear envelope provides the surface for the attachment of the myofilaments, microtubules, and microfilaments, which in turn are connected to cytoplasmic organelles like mitochondria. Number six, shape. The nuclear envelope maintains shape of the nucleus.